Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to November, and welcome to another episode of Overtime with Ben McMillan and Austin Arnold. Last night, the Kent State Golden Flashes hosted the Northern Illinois Huskies in a matchup of the top of the MAC West and the top of the MAC East. Let's get to the highlight to see how it shaped out. Golden Flashes hosting the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Start things off with Rocky Lombardi airing one out and finding his man, Trayvon Rudolph, for the 75-yard score. Rudolph was putting up Madden numbers all, all game, and this was just the start of it. Dustin Crumb looking to respond. Looks to the right, can either pass it or run it, decides keeping himself for an easy seven. 14 to 10, Huskies up in the first. Dustin Crumb was not done yet though. Faking the handoff, following a lineman, making the smart cuts, pushing, rumbling, bumbling past the 10 yard line and in for the score. Flashes up 24-21, second quarter. Let's pick things back up. Flash is still on offense. Dustin Crumb, Sneaks it past the running back and finds the man Chris Leach for the four-yard score. 31-21 flashes, and the handoff to Nikeem Johnson. <laughs> Wins the foot race, reaches the end zone. Pushing more of a lead for Kent State, 38-21 now. Rocky Lombardi, can't count him out. Finds his man once again, 85. Trayvon Rudolph with his third score of the game. He put up 309 receiving yards. But Kent State had an offensive guy having a night of his own too. Marquez Cooper, 175 yards, including this score to almost put the game away. Victory formation for the Flashes. They win 52-47. to With the Golden Flashes now sitting at 4-1 atop of the MAC East, let's go ahead and take a look at who they play this upcoming week, and that is going to be Central Michigan. Central Michigan sits third in their conference right now in the MAC West as they are 3-2 and two in the conference, 5-4 and four overall, and they've won three of their last four games. Their most recent win is coming against Western Michigan by a final score of 42-30, which happened yesterday. And for Central Michigan, the, the standard is simple. The Chippewas need to win at home to keep pace with Northern Illinois. All of the teams in the MAC West are currently separated by two games at the very most in the conference. So each game from this point on in the MAC West is very crucial. But for Kent State, however, they can clinch bowl eligibility with a win against the Chippewas next Wednesday on ESPN+. And if they can do that, they will have games against Akron and Miami of Ohio to secure their spot in the Detroit 2021 MAC Championship game on the, in the first week of December. From Kent State to OHSAA high school football action. First round of playoffs are over and done with. Let's see how some of these teams around Portage County played in their first round matchups. Who's going on and who got set home? The Aurora Greenman versus the Ravenna Ravens. The Green Man is fired up and so is Aurora on this play. Quarterback Alex Moore is going to find Jack Cardamon on the crossing route and he's going to be in a foot race. Look at him go. 35, 30, 25, 20. Nobody's going to catch him. He's going to take it to the crib for the touchdown. The Green Men go up 7-0. And Aurora was not done scoring there as Alex Moore takes the snap. He's going to fire this one to Derek Blum, who's going to dive across the pie line for the score. He gets in there. Aurora adds to their lead after that nice play. And Jack Cardamon, I called his name earlier. He can do it all. He's going to run this one in for the touchdown. Aurora extends their lead to 21-0. And Aurora was not done there. Aiden Henderson this time. He's going to get a touchdown. You get a touchdown. You get a touchdown. Everyone's getting touchdowns. For Aurora, Ethan Cobb trying to make something happen for Ravenna, but that pass is going to be tipped in the air and intercepted. Aurora is going to win this one 42 to 14. They move on to face Dover in the next round. And look at the green man. He's so happy as Aurora gets the win 42 14. Bro, West Geauga in town. We'll pick it up with Streets Bro on offense. Mason Climac, he'll dump it off to Kobe Benjamin. He'll make some defenders miss. He'll go for a huge gain into West Geauga territory. And later on in that drive, Climac fakes the handoff. Pitches it to Preston Hoverton, and he'll go into the end zone untouched for the touchdown. And West Yog on offense now. Danny Stewart with the play action. He'll roll right, hit a wide open Chris Ranello, and he'll go in for the touchdown easy score there for West Yaga. And the Wolverines are back on offense again. Danny Stewart, play action. He's looking, and he'll throw, but it's over the head of his receiver and picked off by none other than Mason Climac. He goes for a huge return deep into West Yaga territory. And Streetsboro back on offense. Climac looking. He'll unload deep into the end zone. And Hopperton, he'll go up over three defenders, make the grab. That's a huge touchdown grab there. And now West Yaga back on offense. Stewart, he'll hit Ranello on the slant. And now he's off to the races. He's breaking defenders' tackles. And he goes in for the touchdown. However, Streetsboro holds on to win 56-42. Move on in the playoffs to face off against Chardon. 
Now, I can't blame you for in the season of fall getting carried away with things like pumpkin spice, the leaves falling, and even football. Me? I like paying attention to field hockey and soccer. Let's take a look around Kent State Athletics and see some of the recent successes from this week. The Kent State field hockey team finished the season winning five of their last six games with their most recent win coming against Ball State by a final score of 2-1 to one on October 30th. The Golden Flashes will face the Longwood Lancers on Friday, November 5th at 2.30 p.m. in Oxford, Ohio. And in a game that could potentially send the Golden Flashes to the championship game if they win, they would have to either face Ohio University or Miami of Ohio University in that championship game if all goes well. Ladies and gentlemen, I have two words. Playoff soccer. If that doesn't get you hyped up for this Golden Flash soccer squad, I don't know what will. The 12-4-3 KSU team took care of business at home last Sunday with a 4-2 win over Toledo in the quarterfinals. In this game, the Flashes were able to put together a complete 90 minutes, seeing contributions from all over the roster. They now move on to their matchup with the Ohio Bobcats tonight at 7 at Bowling Green in the MAC semifinals. These two teams know each other very well, with the regular season finale ending in a 0-0 tie between the Flashes and Bobcats. Can't wait to tune in. Well, unfortunately, everybody, that is the end of this week's episode of Overtime. But don't you worry and don't you fear. We'll be back next week with much, much more, all the same fixings, football, Kent State Athletics, and etc. From Ben McMillan, I'm Austin Arnold. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys next week.